the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on using what if analysis scenarios in Excel. Now, if you've never used Scenarios before, Scenarios is a utility available as part of the What If Analysis Toolkit in Excel. And you'll find these on the Data ribbon. In the Forecast group, you'll have a little drop down there for What If Analysis, and you'll see you've got three options there. And the one that we're focusing on in this video is the Scenario Manager. Now, what scenarios allow you to do is to try out different values or scenarios so that you can easily see which set of conditions will create the most favorable outcome. And you can create multiple scenarios and try them out on your data risk free. So what I mean by that is it won't permanently change the underlying data and you can toggle between those scenarios and even create a summary report to see the scenarios compared side by side. So it's a really useful little feature. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to jump into a very basic example. We're going to set up some scenarios and I can show you how they can work for you. So in this example, I am using a household budget. So this is very simple. I have income listed at the top here. So my salary essentially. Underneath, I have all of my outgoings, so what I spend each month. I have a total of my outgoings, which is just a sum calculation of B7 to B15. And then finally, right at the bottom, I have the amount of money I have left over or the amount of disposable income I have each month based on this scenario just here. So again, the amount left is just a sum calculation. It's doing B4, which is my income, minus the total of my outgoing. So I can see that each month in this scenario, currently I have $1,335 of disposable income. Now what I want to do is I want to compare this to some other scenarios. So essentially what I'm going to say is that this is my original scenario. But what I want to see is how my figures look. So really the amount of disposable income I'm going to have left at the end of the month if I was to get a promotion. And I then want to see what this looks like in a third scenario, which might be me obtaining a new job. So each of these scenarios are going to have variable values. And what I mean by that is that if I get a promotion, that that might mean that my salary will increase. If I get a new job, then that might also mean that my salary will increase. And maybe because I have an increased salary, I'm going to start spending more on going out. Or maybe I have to travel a little bit further, so I'm going to have more travel costs. So these values are going to change in each scenario. And essentially what I'm trying to do is find out which scenario is going to be best for me. Do I stay in my current position? Do I take the promotion or do I go for that new job? So we're going to set up three scenarios. Now, before we do this, I want to show you something which is really going to help you when it comes to creating a summary report and being able to understand the data that you're looking at. Now, this might not make too much sense as I'm doing it. You may not be able to figure out why I'm actually doing it, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a full understanding. So the first thing I always like to do is I like to name my ranges. And I'm going to name the ranges for the data that could change. Now, this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to name ranges. So if you're not sure what that is or how you do that, and that's definitely something worth looking up or Googling, I'm just going to do it very quickly. I'm going to highlight where it says salary and the value. And I'm also going to highlight some of these other items that may change. So I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to highlight all of these. And that is pretty much it. So now I'm going to name these ranges and I'm going to do that by jumping across to the formulas ribbon. And you can see in the defined names group, I'm going to utilize the create from selection button just here. And what Excel does is it says, do you want me to create names for these values based on what is in the left column? So it's recognized that I've highlighted some text in the left column. And if I say yes, use names in the left column, essentially cell B4 is going to be named salary, cell B7 is going to be named rent, cell B8 is going to be named electricity, so on and so forth. So I'm going to click on OK. 
and I can just do a quick check to make sure that those have been done by clicking the drop down in the name box and I can now see that I have all of those listed just there. So if I was to select electricity, it's going to jump me to the cell that relates to electricity. Now this is a really important step and as I said, you'll see why when we get to the end of this video and we start creating our summary reports. Now that I've done that, I can actually go in and start creating my scenarios. So I'm going to jump back to the data tab. I'm going to go to what if analysis and I'm, and I'm going to jump into scenario manager. OK, so what we want to do here is we want to define our first scenario. Now, I always recommend making an original scenario so that when you start changing things, you can always jump back to your original figures. So that's the first one we're going to do. I'm going to click on add. I'm going to give my scenario a name. I'm going to call it original. And it's asking me for the changing cells. So I'm going to remove B8 from here. And my changing cells are essentially going to be the ones that we just named. So I'm going to click in cell B4. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to select the rest of these cells. Click on OK. And what it does is it pulls those through. So you can see here it's got salary, rent, electricity, water and all of the corresponding values. Now, this is why it's good to name your ranges. If I hadn't have named these, what you would see in here is just the cell reference. So instead of salary, it would say B4. Instead of rent, it would say B7. And that might be fine. It's not necessary to name your ranges, but sometimes it just makes it quite complicated to see which item relates to which value. It's a lot easier if you have them named in a meaningful way. Now, this is the original scenario. I'm not changing anything here, so I'm just going to click on OK. And you can see now I have an original scenario listed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another scenario for if I get a promotion. So let's click on add. I'm going to call it promotion. The changing cells are the same cells. I'm going to click on OK. But now I'm going to input my values that are relevant for if I get a promotion. So let's say if I get a promotion, I'm going to be earning a bit more money. So we're going to change this to 3,500. If I look through the rest of my values, I can see probably these aren't going to change too much. But it might be that if I am earning a little bit more, then I'm going to spend a little bit more on going out. So I'm going to change this from 300 to 350. And I think that's about it for this one. I'm going to click on OK. And I now have my promotion scenario. I'm going to add a third scenario. And this one is going to be if I take that new job that I've been looking at. I'm going to click on OK. Now this new job, the salary is 4000 a month. But one of the drawbacks of this new job is that it is a little bit further away. So I'm going to have to spend a bit more on travel costs. So I'm going to put that up to 350. My new job is also in a more expensive part of the town. So that means that gyms cost a little bit more. I like to go to the gym in my lunch break. So I'm going to put this gym up to 220. And I also might decide that I am still going to spend a little bit more on going out and I'm going to change that to 350 and click on OK. Now I have three scenarios there. You can, of course, go through and add more if you like. But in this example, I'm fairly happy with those three. So now if I want to see the amount of disposable income I'm going to have left if I take that promotion, all I need to do is select the promotion scenario and click on the show button and my figures now update. If I select new job and click the show button, my figures update again. And if I want to get back to my original scenario, I have that listed there. I can click show and it puts me back to how it was. So a really nice way of being able to see what your values are going to look like in all these different scenarios. Now, the final thing I want to show you here is that it's all well and good being able to toggle between these different scenarios. But imagine if you've got quite a few of them, it's quite hard to remember which one is going to be the best outcome for you. Really, what you would want is to see them all side by side so you can make a direct comparison. And that is where the summary report comes in. So you can see here I have a summary button. If I click that, it's going to ask me what do I want to create a scenario summary or I could create a pivot table report. 
Now, at the moment, I want to create a scenario summary. Click on OK. It creates a new worksheet, and now I can see all of my scenarios side by side. So it's showing me what I currently have on my spreadsheet, so the current values. It's showing me my original scenario, my promotion scenario, and my new job scenario. And I can see my disposable income at the bottom just here. And because I didn't name that cell, you can see I have the cell reference just here. So that is what all of these would look like if I hadn't named them. So it might be that you also want to name the amount left just here. You might want to highlight that and add that as a named range so that when you do the report, it says amount left as opposed to the cell reference. But this allows me to see very quickly which is going to be the best scenario. And I can see here I would have the most disposable income if I took the new job. So that is it, a very quick run through of the extremely useful scenario manager in the What If Analysis Tools group. Thanks so much for listening, guys, and I will see you in the next video. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.